As a young realtor getting into the real estate industry, a lot of times it can be overwhelming and daunting because of your age. And a lot of people struggle to kind of wrap their head around if you're 18, 19, 20 years old, early 20s, why somebody would decide to work with you versus somebody with more experience or is just older in general that they feel like they might trust a little bit more. So what I'm gonna do in this video is break down five specific things that you can do as a young realtor in order to get over these fears and limiting beliefs of why somebody would not want to work with you so that you can drive your business forward and start to achieve massive success because there's agents in my organization at the Wolfpack with EXP that are 20, 21 years old that are absolutely crushing it. But I've had this exact same conversation that I'm gonna go through with you today with each of them. And after sharing this with them, a lot of them realized that there's things that they could have changed that they all did change, thankfully, that can yield massive results and get people to the point where your clients are never going to question how old you are. What's up guys, my name is Mike Sharp with the XP Realty and I train thousands of agents every year to scale their business the modern way with social media. Um, and I'm excited to talk about this because when I got into started in real estate, I was young. I was 24 years old, new agent, new city, he just moved here, didn't know anybody. And I kind of had that in the beginning limiting belief too of why would somebody work with me as a new agent with like no money um, and no experience and just moved here versus somebody that was maybe 35, 40, 45, 50, 55 years old that had years of experience or was just more of a relatable age to the average homeowner. And what I realized is when you start focusing on these five things, a lot of that equation becomes irrelevant and you can start to build mass momentum like I did in my first year. So without further ado, let's dive into them. Number one, using your age to your advantage. So back in 2017, when I got started in real estate, I was using my age to my advantage and it worked out very well because a lot of times what people are now seeing is that in the olden days, realtors were essentially gatekeepers of information. You couldn't find out anything about a property in, unless you contacted a realtor. They were like safeguarding all the information as licensed realtors. But with technology and with the internet and companies like realtor.com, Zillow, and just IDX feeds in general, now people basically have all of the information that they need in order to look at the properties. So what I wanted to do is think about how I can use my age to my advantage Advantage, knowing that people are now looking for something different because now the people have so many opportunities to educate themselves they're looking for more out of a realtor in a different sense they're looking for experience not in terms of years but in terms of the quality of the consumer journey they are looking for innovation modern strategies creativity what are you going to do differently is basically what everybody's looking for. So my approach to it was to use my age to my advantage in the sense that back in 2017, nobody was leveraging Facebook ads. Nobody was doing drones. Nobody was you know, doing a lot of the modern social stuff. So I leaned into that. And that way, when I was going up against other more experienced agents in listing presentations, I won almost every single one of them because they would talk about their years of experience and their brokerage, which is completely irrelevant and doesn't mean anything. And they would talk about, you know, their years in the business. Well, number one, what you realize is most agents that have been in the business for 20 years have basically relived their first year for 20 years. Uh, so they haven't made any progress. Um, and the second thing is I would just say, hey, no problem, but I can prove to you that through the advertising strategies that I have with leveraging modern social media, I'm able to get your home in front of more people than any other agent in the city. And I can prove it with data and screenshots and it's going to be in a way that's gonna get in front of people that are not looking for a home. Because everybody else's strategy was, you know, realtor.com, MLS, upload it and let it become a sitting duck. And the big problem with that is that you're only gonna get in front of people that are all working with a realtor. Whereas I was able to get in front of people that weren't even looking on any website for properties, but now if the perfect property landed across, the they might actually pull the trigger. And crazy enough, a couple times that they actually did. Number two, over deliver on value. And what I mean by this is that a lot of people that have been in the business for longer or that are older have kind of gotten to the position where they've stopped doing the things that got them there if they're at, in a, you know, at a successful level. So they stop doing all of the little intricacies along the way in terms of really strong communication because of them, they've got 10, 20 listings. How are they going to communicate with all of them at once? Right? So if you can over deliver on value in terms of saying you're going to communicate better, you're going to provide better quality marketing. You're going to provide more undivided attention. You're going to, again, one of the things that I did that went really well in terms of over delivering on value is every single Monday when I would have, you know, any amount of listings, I would send a detailed report, 500 plus words to every single 
single client summarizing everything that's going on in their property. So I would talk about the marketing outcome in terms of the impressions and the conversions and leads. I would talk about the open house feedback. I would talk about showing feedback, you know, different, you know, comparables that just sold, just came on the market, expired, terminated, whatever. And that was really advantageous because I've almost never had a client reach out and say, Mike, what's going on with their property? And what you'll see is that if people tried to sell their house in the past and it didn't work, the number one feedback is that the realtor was not good with communication and they felt like they were in the dark. So if you can over deliver on value during the process, then that is going to make sure that nobody asks your age as a younger realtor. Number three, knowledge will always trump age. This is a really important one, which is why if you look at some of the other videos that I talk about what to do before and after getting your license, I constantly talk about spending a bit of time every day learning the market stats. Because here's one of the big things that people do wrong. If you ask them questions about how something's going in, in your city or in, in a specific community, most of the times the response is, it's either going well, it's really hot, it's not that well. It, the, their answers are generic. Whereas if you study the data and somebody asks you what's going on in your city and you respond to them with, well, where in the city do you care about? They're going to say, okay, this area over here, this quadrant, this kind of center, this community or this batch of communities. And you can say, no worries. Here is the months of inventory. Here's the average days on market. Here's the average list of sales price. Here's the current active listings. Here are the solds for the last month. Well, nobody is ever going to ask you how old you are in the business unless it's a good thing because they're going to say, wow, I'm surprised you're so knowledgeable about the market. Um, and that's what I did is I rarely had anybody ask. And when they did, it was a compliment, not something that was a negative because they were like, how do you know so much about the market? Because I studied it. And if you can understand that knowledge will always trump age, all you need to do is become an expert at your market to the point where all people are looking for is the answers. And if you can give them the answers more clearly in detail than anybody else, your age is relevant, right? So, start studying your data and start making sure that you can give detailed context to any question that you get asked by a client. Number four is a big one. And this is looking the part. This is incredibly important. And this is one of the ones that a lot of agents that I talk to actually struggle with for a little bit, because as a young agent, a lot of agents not just look young, but like they dress young. Right. And I had a lot of newer agents saying, Mike, you know, I want to get into the luxury space. I want to start getting higher price point clients. I'm only getting other millennials. Well, what you have to understand is you need to go through this exercise. And this exercise is trying to put yourself in somebody else's shoes. If let's say you're a 20 year old realtor and you're wearing like a polo and just normal pants and think about somebody that's 45 years old worked their entire life to get to the point where they bought like a million or $2 million property. Do you think that person that's 45 years old is going to look at you that looks young and dresses young and say, that's my guy. Or do you think they're going to look at the agent that is dressed up in a suit and looks like they take pride in themselves and looks like a luxury realtor? Probably they're going to work with the one that looks like a luxury realtor. And this comes down to the concept, which again, it's not right. It just is what it is, is that everybody judges everybody. So your appearance is going to be judged and that's going to be your first impression on anybody. So what you need to understand is that if you're looking to make a good first impression, if you're looking to not make your age a topic of conversation or a point of contingency or some sort of objection, if you're looking to get into a higher price point market, then you need to start dressing like a luxury agent or like an agent that takes pride in their business, is professional, takes care of themselves, because that is going to kind of reduce people's barrier to looking at you as a younger agent. And number five is shifting your mindset. You have to understand the concept that what fills your mind fills your heart becomes your reality and the fact that your thoughts will become your reality. So if you are constantly thinking, nobody's going to work with me because I'm young, I'm never going to get into the luxury space because I am young. People are not going to work with me because they're going to question my age. I'm never going to be able to break into this community because everybody else is older and I'm young. If you think that that's going to become your reality because you've convinced yourself it's true to the point where that's how you're going to operate. And you're going to operate in a place of fear in terms of limiting beliefs, in terms of low self-esteem and in terms of lack of confidence. Because again, the words that you say to yourself are the most powerful thing in your life. And if you continuously tell yourself that it's going to be a negative, that it's going to be a drawback, that it's going to be an objection or that you're not going to be able to do it because of your age, it's exactly what's going to happen. But if you say, hey, I'm younger, I'm hungry, I've got lots of energy, I'm innovative, I'm creative, I've got new strategies that other agents that are older don't understand and can't implement like I can. Well, that's exactly what I did. 
and the outcome was becoming a top producer in my first couple of years. And that's because I've convinced myself that I am the right person for the job, that my age doesn't mean anything because I've got more knowledge than the average agent, that I will go above and beyond and over deliver on value and make sure that I come up with a creative way to leverage modern strategies so that I differentiate myself from the other agents by using my age to my advantage. So when you start looking at this, you really have to take care of your mindset. You really have to think about your approach and from other people's perspectives as well. And you have to make sure that you don't use it as a limiting belief, but rather use it to your advantage. If you have any other questions about being a young agent in the industry, just drop a comment below, but otherwise, hopefully this helps you. So thanks so much for tuning in. As always, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.